Democracy allows for everyone to have their say, yet it also allows for the most people possible to be disappointed in the results. Take the Minecraft Live 2023 vote for example, where the largest number of people voted and eventually the armadillo won. This should be the most successful vote ever, but it also led to the largest number of people having their hopes dashed. And so hundreds of thousands of people signed petitions, created accusations of fraud, or even directed hate directly at Mojang for their decision not to add all three mobs. Democracy being unpopular might seem like a new thing, but actually this is something we've seen with every previous mob vote winner being some of the least popular mobs in the game. The Phantom or the Glow Squid are much more hated than any mob that Mojang added without asking, and so do people really prefer dictatorships? Is this just an especially divided community, or does the worst choice always win? Hello, I'm Abyx, Toy Cat, and today I'm going to be doing a full and complete post-mortem of the 2023 mob vote because this was the worst clash at one of these votes we've ever seen, and it's clear that there are lessons that need to be learned for when they do this again. First things first though, the armadillo. The armadillo received the most votes out of any mob we've ever seen polled across all of Minecraft history, with 2.1 million people registering their support for this little brown mammal. However, despite this, the majority of people this year did not vote for it, as indeed proven by this post that Minecraft themselves put out, 57% of players actually voted for the crab or the penguin instead. This means that the majority of people did not vote for the armadillo, and indeed this year was both the most votes we've ever seen for a mob, but also the most votes we've ever seen against a mob. More people voted for a losing choice this year than voted for any choice in the five separate polls they did between 2017 and 2021, which really goes to show that there is a lot of people who didn't like the armadillo, but still, it's important to reference that the armadillo was the most popular individual choice, it did win a plurality, and why did it win is a very hard question to answer, but I'm going to attempt to steal man today from the position of an armadillo voter, because there were only three real comparables that we had between each of the three mobs, and let's talk about why people would choose the armadillo in each of these. First of all, the savannah is empty. The stony shores was as well, but the mangrove swamp certainly wasn't. A lot of people deciding between the crab and the armadillo might have decided that the armadillo would at least add a new mob to a biome that didn't have one, whereas the mangrove swamp is already well populated by frogs. This is one of the reasons, but the second is much more likely to be the biggest considering factor, because wolf armor is one of the tangible benefits that the armadillo would bring, even if you hated the mob itself, getting its scutes and turning them into wolf armor is something that many people would like, and in case this isn't something that's very obvious to you, think about just how popular wolves are amongst the Minecraft community. You might argue that only children like wolves, but actually the number of memes about leaving your wolf behind and coming back to him years later proves that many, many people have a deep affinity for wolves, and if you look at the Minecraft feedback site, many of the most popular suggestions are always people saying that they would love to have different varieties of dogs in the same way that we do for cats. Also, one of the most popular features Mojang has ever added, despite it being very simple, is being able to dye your wolf's color. People want wolf customization, and wolf armor is not only a great way to keep him safe from all the threats in the world, but also is a way to customize your wolf. And I also think that it is the most tangible benefit out of the three mobs. This is the key reason I think many tactical voters might finally decide on the armadillo, because there's no world in which an armadillo isn't cute by itself. And so whether you personally think dog armor would be useful for your wolves, or whether ultimately dogs are gonna die in lava or drowning or the void anyway, uh, the ultimate question is whether you know what dog armor is going to do, and the answer is yes, it will give you the tangible benefit of something pretty for your dog, and also the armadillo, which will be a fun mob for the savannah, and then there's a nice bonus if it happens to be useful, whereas the penguin and the crab for many players was kind of hinging on their fringe benefits of having, uh, in the case of the penguin, extra boat speed, but what if it wasn't useful? What if he only swam next to you like a dolphin, or the crab claw which could have extended block reach by only half a block and been very cumbersome to use. From the information that Mojang presented, which was just a very small slice of what each of the three mobs will actually represent, uh, this was the logical choice for most of the people, or rather, the plurality of the people. However, isn't it an interesting choice that Mojang are the people that decide which piece of information to reveal, and indeed, that is what the community then decides to vote on? It almost starts to feel as though they're truly the ones deciding, which is one of the many reactions the community had. 
There is no polite way to put it, this is the worst reaction to a Minecraft Live mob vote that we have ever had. Mojang and the community should both be asking themselves what do we need to do to avoid this, and more importantly, the big question of why don't they just add all three mobs is something that should be seriously answered and addressed, and I think I will dive into it in this video what that would actually mean, because it is a really compelling idea for anyone who hits it for the first time, but the other reactions, the more mild ones, are the ones which are much more interesting and worth diving into, because many people argue that Mojang is locking crucial features behind the mob vote. This is something that comes across as especially valid when the trial chambers are announced for 1.21, with an emphasis on tough and copper, bringing in a whole bunch of new variants of both of those blocks, but notably not having a golem that could be made from either, because obviously the community voted against it, and although Minecraft directly addressed at this year's Minecraft Live the idea that just because something's in second doesn't mean it's gone forever, don't feel too bad for the penguin. Remember our little frog friends didn't win the vote either, but they still managed to up their way into the game. This has only happened one time out of the 15 mob or biome vote losers that we've had, and that's before considering the China edition, which we'll mostly be leaving to the side for this video because it wasn't something that the vast majority of the public could vote on, uh, but there are a lot more mobs that you could argue are also not coming to the game because they are losers, and so this is something that doesn't really reassure the community. Although they are not explicitly saying they'll never add them to the game, they do have a very clear tie that they are not a very popular concept, and if the most popular mob in a year, like say the Sniffer, which 55% of players chose, uh, is actually not very liked at all, then well that clearly shows that the Tough Golem, which had even fewer votes, is going to be a dead end for players, and this is something that I think is at the heart of what people really don't like about mob votes, it is that Mojang is specifically telling us something that could be in the game, they could make this work, and then saying, ah but we're not going to do it because not enough of you decided you liked it. There are all sorts of great ideas that players have had. Uh, um, the common one is, yeah, why don't we have guns, or why don't we have cars, or why don't we have uh, the ability to have custom dog skins, and they're all different levels of absurd, but we never expect them to be in an update and then get mad when they're not, because of course, Mojang has literally an infinite number of things that they could do, and working out what fits into the game is something they always say they have to struggle with. However, when it comes to things that they have actually worked out would make sense in the game, like longer reach distance, or like a mob which can function as a pseudo-random uh, number generator, or even like a hostile mob for the mountains to make them a more interesting place, when they come up with these ideas and then immediately back down from them because they're not popular, it makes people realize that they could be adding things all the time, but actually are not. In other words, Mojang is locking crucial features behind the mob vote, and when you hear that faster boats or the ability to place blocks further away is definitely not happening this year and might not happen ever, you might just get a little heartbroken after learning that it probably could have happened if it weren't locked behind a vote. The other thing that people will say is that players who don't even play Minecraft that much shouldn't be allowed to vote. Maybe there should be some minimum playtime allowed. Uh, a lot of people think that it's ridiculous that no matter how many hours or how much time or how much you know Minecraft, your vote is the exact same as everyone else. This is a very interesting opinion that comes up in the real world occasionally, that the level of qualification that you need to vote is basically none. You don't even need to know who you're voting on, you can place a random X in a random box and your vote is worth as much as someone who spends weeks pouring over information and economic policy and trying to dive into exactly the different positions on people and ultimately this is a flaw in democracy but I don't think it's a very good argument at least for the sake of a mob vote. I think a different mob being added to the game is something even if you make on a superfluous level is still what Mojang basically wants you to do. If you ignore everything about the free mobs besides this one looks cute that is a valid reason to vote even if I don't personally like it and so I don't think this is as great of a reaction. I also think a lot of people will say that people will always is just vote for the cute mob, but if you look at 2021 and 2022, I'm not sure that that's entirely true. I think that the Copper Golem was objectively the cutest mob in 2021, and I think it was at least debatable as to whether the Sniffer, the Rascal, or the Tough Golem are the cutest mob from 2022. I think in this case, the Armadillo has its cute points going, and I think in the case of 2020 and the Glow Squid, that's probably the cutest mob, uh, but saying that people will always vote for a cute option is kind of just a way of saying you don't care about cuteness. It's okay to care about cuteness over functionality, but that doesn't mean that everyone else has to as well, and this is the biggest batch of negative reactions I think, is some variation of these three things, but I think all of these could be solved, every single dispute that we've just even delved into could be solved if they just added all of the mobs, right? And so, why not just add all three mobs? First, we should be asking if we really want it though. The 
crux of this video is no, no they do not. Many people make their decisions and find their opinions based on emotional stimuli from their life and this is entirely fine but I try as much as I can to take an analytical approach and one of the key things I want to get across in this video is when you look at the previous mob votes, if you look at the six mobs that have come as part of a mob vote and exclude the panda from the china and the llama from the twitter polls, take these mobs and compare them to any six mobs in Minecraft, are they winning? If you pick a very favourable sixth then obviously there is not a single one on the left side here that you'd pick over the right but even if you pick a random six or the worst six mobs in Minecraft I think it's pretty hard to argue that they're not equally as bad as the ones that we have picked ourselves. The phantom is by far the worst mob and I think it's really telling that two of the most popular mobs decided by the community, the goat and the fox, are ones you don't really need to interact with all that much at all, if ever, and ultimately are even more interesting examples because they weren't ones people even voted on directly, they were made as part of biomes votes so people might have been voting on the snowiest snow or the campfire and just happened to get the fox on the side. It almost seems looking at these six mobs and the community's reaction to them that either we have a pre-built in bias towards hating things that people tend to vote on or even worse we have a bias towards voting on things that we know we're not going to like. The fandom does sound like a really interesting mob but I mean... <sighs> There is no mob in the game more hated than one we actually voted for and even when it comes to mobs that we voted for by large margins like the sniffer, they're not universally loved and even leave a weird taste in people's mouths. People might have grown to enjoy the torch flower or the pitcher pod or even just think the sniffer is a weird part of 1.20 but because of the turmoil that comes from democracy, people instead think, wait, I voted for this guy based on the fact that he'd give ancient flowers and all they are are two separate things that he digs up and they exist in the world and that's just about it. This feels like something I want a refund on and of course there's no way to undo your vote. Once it's locked in it's that way forever. The same is true for the glow squid which people largely voted on because they saw it would transfix players in and uh, allow them to be really ore dropped but instead it is just a fun variant of the squid. One of my favorite items in the game, the glowing sack, comes from it and it allows signs to be so much more readable but people are instead focused on the negative and not the positive for seemingly any mob vote mob. In fact I decided to do a a fun poll on Twitter to work out which of the winners is actually people's favorites. So between uh, the six mobs, I did it in three rounds, Phantom, Fox, Goat, and then Glow Squid, Alley, Sniffer. Off the two rounds, the Fox was the far winner for the first one, the Alley was the big winner for the second, and then between the two of them, the favorite mob across everyone's experience is the Fox. And this is interesting because the Fox really was sold as, yeah, it's a mob that's cute and exists in the Tiger, I guess, and the Fox we finally got was a mob that is cute and exists in the Tiger, I guess. You can't even tame a fox because taming a fox uh, in Minecraft might convince some people that they'd be able to tame foxes in real life. This is a real big problem apparently according to Minecraft and so instead you can sort of befriend a fox and he will vaguely stay near you and that is the entirety of his existence. He can hold items in his mouth but mostly that's a nuisance thing and if you're playing Ultra Flat Survival, the IBX Toy Cat great super flat remix then obviously you'll be able to find diamonds by killing them but in the base game it promised almost nothing and delivered nothing and that is the most excited that people actually are. This is wild if you ask me and it's not like that year wasn't a slightly divisive vote. You might recall that the savannah biome was one of the choices and boy was that the better, you know, it, it clearly seems that people are saying the savannah biome's empty now, it would have been a better idea to update it all the way back in 2018 but I swear I'm not mad. Anyway, the point being is the fox being the most popular uh, choice despite the number of uses you can get from goats and goat horns, glow squid and glowing sacks, allies and you know, flying around mansions. Wait a minute, the alley is the second most popular mob and it also barely has a use. The less of the use they give the mob vote mobs, the less divided people are about it. This is a wild fact to consider, but actually seems to be true. I think if there's a takeaway from this, it's that the Minecraft community is really good at voting for something based on the appearance or based on the vibes, but when it comes to actual features, it kind of looks like this. Ah uh, yes, it is nice to have you into my home. Would you like to have a drink while you are here? No, thank you for inviting me round. So I can just drink one of the drinks that you have here on the coffee table, right? Yes, those are the choices. Have whichever is tastiest to you. Although one of them I just accidentally left on the table from when I went grocery shopping. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, these all look pretty good to me, but there's only one choice that I think I clearly have to go for. I don't think that's a good idea. Ah. Uh. No, what, what? No, you, you don't have, oh. Uh. You, you, 
Why? Why what? would you let me drink this? It tastes terrible. The only thing that would help is if you also let me drink this. I don't know what this is going to taste like, but... But it was you who decided to drink it. We did not force you. That was terrible, by the way, and this whole bit was as well. Instead of doing it all, I should have just used the meme of the guy sticking the st is a stick in his wheel, and th th this one right here for five seconds. Imagine you saw that instead. Anyway, the point is... Mojang does have the capacity to add more than one mob a year to the game, and they actually already do. In fact, lots of the last few updates have had three mobs in there precisely, which means if they wanted to, they could take out the existing mobs, assuming there is a finite amount of development resources, and they could instead focus those resources on adding the second and third place mobs. And so we're going to leave aside the questions of how, the why, etc, and instead just compare the mobs that Mojang added, with no voting procedure whatsoever each year, to the second and third place mob that they would instead be adding if they decided to add each of the three mobs to the game and so take the uh, Tails and Trails update announced in 2022 this features a sniffer as well as a camel instead of the camel they could have added the rascal or the tough golem I personally think the camel comes off looking pretty good by comparison and especially when you go back another year to the wild update the alley was added to the game alongside the frog which actually was a second place mob and the warden if you could choose between the warden or the glare or copper golem or even the warden and the glare and the copper golem I think you would be insane to take any trade that means you don't get him in fact the alley was probably the weakest mob they added that year and it's honestly one of the more favorable of the mobs that are in the game the same is true for the glow squid which came as the first part of caves and cliffs alongside goats another minecraft live mob vote winner uh, but would you have rather had the moo bloom or the isologer instead of the axolotl which was the third place mob I think in general when you look at the losing mobs, you're not actually losing that much. As a whole, yes, in individual choices, yeah. I think the Isologer is one of the better second place mobs, but also could be one of the most annoying. The best second place mobs, the ones that we like to imagine, are the ones which have the highest potential, but that means they have the highest potential to be bad. I think this really is proven best by going back to the update Aquatic. The most interesting mob they added in that update, uh, the very first mob vote, was probably not the turtle or the dolphin, but instead the monster of the night skies, the phantom. However, despite it being the most interesting and coming with a whole new potion, it also came with a whole new way to have your life be ruined. And it's funny because I think in a world where we just saw the model and then never saw anything else from the phantom again, we would all be wishing we lived in a world with the phantom. But as soon as we actually do, we realize that, oh God, there is one thing I want in this world more than anything else. And it's to live in a world without the phantom. And this is something that I think is certainly true for every single year. We live in in the world where the thing happened and so we don't get to have nostalgic memories we don't get to have grand ideas of what it could have been because the moment something that we have expectations for exists it stops being something which exists in a uh, you know, almost quantum state of being everything we want and nothing we don't want and all of a sudden has to start actually existing this is exacerbated in the long lead time between a mob being voted on by the public and it coming to the game usually it's about the majority of the year to get between the vote stage and the in the game stage and and this means that people have all sorts of expectations that they will discuss very publicly. They'll talk about pros and cons, and in the case of the pros, they might not turn out to be as good as they thought. But even in the case of the cons, if you hate a mob because you don't want it and you're specifically not voting for it, then you might end up hating the mob when it comes out because it doesn't live up to other people's expectations, which is a bit of a vicious cycle, which is why maybe even though the turtle is not a game-changing mob because no one had any negative expectations and instead it just kind of happened, it's a fun thing that you might enjoy and that maybe allows you to make a fun new helmet or maybe you don't need to interact with whatsoever. And indeed, I think this is where the positive opinion for the goat, the fox and the alley kind of come from. You don't interact with them on any regular basis and so they're doing pretty great. I think one day this might lead to the sniffers reputation being rehabilitated as it becomes the sort of mob you go, oh yeah, that happened, didn't it? And because the community voted on it. And so ultimately, is it good to have more of these in the game or fewer of them? This is an interesting question itself, but ultimately doesn't matter as much as the question of... 
there's one very big, very good reason why Mojang can't add all three mobs, but instead of giving it to people, when players ask Mojang, why don't you just add all three, instead we get a response about how much development time it takes to add three mobs to the game, and how they can't possibly do that for one update, despite the fact that we have multiple updates where that has precisely happened, and so instead the more interesting question might be looking at modders and saying, well, why is it that modders can add three separate mobs to the game, not in the case space of a year, but instead in the space of a week. Every single time there is a mob vote, modders will make this, and there's a lot of very easy reasons to explain why it is that this is different to the real development team. One of these is the fact that the mobs have been designed in some basic level. Mojang talks a lot about how design is a big part of the game, but also they're only working on the Java edition. They don't need to worry about crossplay between Bedrock and Java and working out things that work exactly the same on both. They're not working in an organizational structure where some people have to manage one part of it, another set of people have to manage that part of it, and they also don't need to get it right the first time. If there's bugs or minor issues with the implementation, it's not actually a big deal, but more importantly, modders have a big incentive to make the mob vote mods first. They will make a lot of money if they're the first person to put out a mod with all of these brand new features that people want, and so that is why, ultimately, Mojang could do this themselves. It would be a lot harder than if modders did it, but it's not an impossibility. If Mojang really wanted to, 10 mobs in an update is entirely possible. I mean, they have an art team within the space of a year. I'm sure they could put together 10 textures. They have an animation team. I'm sure in the space of a year, they could put together 10 separate animations. And ultimately, you could direct a lot of resources towards adding an ungodly number of mobs to an update. But there is a reason they don't do this. And one of these is it's probably not what people actually want. And the other of which is actually coming down to the fact that, yeah, ultimately, any resources they dedicate to making mobs, especially less popular mobs, are things that they can't dedicate to making the actually popular features. Instead of making the new cherry tree and its blossoms and all of the other features in that biome, instead they could have added some losing mobs, but I think we would all prefer they focus on that. And obviously there is a even deeper argument about why Mojang has such limited resources that I think is a deep one to dive into, but ultimately it's not the big reason as to why they don't just add all three mobs, and that is because adding all three mobs is just an effect adding none of the mobs. There's not really a vote at all if Mojang asks us to vote between the Breeze, the Poison Skeleton, and the Armadillo, uh, because if they add all three anyway, then we didn't really have a choice, right? This is something that should be clear to anyone who understands democracy. If you look at the 2019 North Korean parliamentary election, you'll notice that this Kim Jong-un fellow is really popular because he got 100% of the vote. I mean, ignore the fact that no one else can run against him and he's the only choice. That's not actually democracy. If you aren't going to have a failure state, then you don't really have a winning state. And this should be extra clear to gamers. The whole point of trade-offs is that yes, we are voting on a mob to be added and inherently saying that these other mobs are not worth adding, but then that becomes a real question about why are people less happy now than they've been before? We've added lots of mobs to the game and it used to be a fun event, so what is it that changed? Something interesting you'll note when we go back in time to previous mob votes is that the second and third place choices clearly were not very good options. Especially with last year with 55% of people thinking the sniffer was the clear choice, we had an option that was so head and shoulders above the rest that the only complaints people had was, well, what is the point in showing three mobs when one is so good? And so Mojang corrected a lot of the mistakes from these previous years with this year's mob vote, where I would say there was genuinely a valid reason to vote for each of the three choices. I think the only reason against voting for the penguin is that we didn't quite know how boats would speed up. We've since had it confirmed that those fears were wrong and the penguin would be a great choice, but we'll ignore that for now. The crab was going to be a fun new item that seems like pure upside and at the very least is a fun little addition to the biome. And the armadillo was going to be life for the savannah biome with the ability to give your wolf's armor. All three of the mob choices actually did something and all three of the mob choices felt like real things we like to have in the game and that should be a recipe for an interesting election, and it was definitely one of the most interesting and closest. This is the first time that we've ever seen the community actually be surprised at it. A genuine majority of people were not expecting the armadillo to win, and so it was a big surprise, and it has all the fun things of a regular vote. This should have been a big win, but interestingly, it seems to state that the closer together the mobs are, the more people who vote against something, the more people are unhappy. Seeing the penguin go away for seemingly ever, at least for a very 
long time is actually a very bad thing. Seeing the crab go away and the extra utility is something that a lot of people feel bad about and so even though adding all three mobs to the game is effectively not having a vote, people would rather nullify the idea of democracy just so that they could have all three of these decent options in a way that they just didn't feel about when it came to the rascal and the tough golem. And so an interesting uh, little thought experiment is uh, do people prefer unbalanced elections? I decided to do a fun uh, poll on my Twitter. Uh, if you had to choose between three mobs coming to Minecraft, what would you pick? The muddy pig, the cow with horns, or a boss mob with a whole new dimension? And 68.6% .6 of people like the boss mob with the new dimension, which means that this is an election that no one is disappointed in if the boss mob is added. However, if you make a much closer one, people are going to be disappointed when their things lose, which means that if you're looking at this from a pure happiness perspective, it seems as though close elections are bad. The US elections, which are mostly free and fair, uh, are actually terrible when compared to the North Korean one, which seems counterintuitive. So let's actually examine that a little closer. Are people less happy with democracy? Looking at the major organizations in people's lives, the majority do not operate as democracies. Look at a family, a restaurant, or your workplace, and you'll notice they're not operated on a most vote system. Usually there is a predetermined set of rules and powers, and people follow these, and it tends to work out for the majority of cases. In fact, a democratic government, which rules the land, is actually a very surprising exception, which mostly seems to exist solely for the peaceful transfer of power. If you look at the democratic systems around the world, people are often unhappy with the very things they voted for. The UK, for example, tried direct democracy with referendums in the early 2010s, holding three of them in a few years. We had the alternative vote referendum, the Scottish independence referendum, and Brexit. And no matter what you think about all three, you know they're controversial, and far from being put to bed, people who believe that there should be an alternative vote, or people who believe that there should be a Scottish independence, or indeed people who believe there should not have been a Brexit, are very, very infused, and even more so than they would have been if there were not a vote. This is proven in Minecraft with people being less happy with the Phantom or the Glow Squid than the Turtle or the Axlotl from the same updates without any save from the public and clearly proves that deep point that people are much less happy with a democratic system than without one, at least it seems on the surface. However, to give an analysis that endorses dictatorships just a little bit less, I think the better way to think about it would be a comparison to sport, a situation where people get very impassioned about the side that they support. This this leads to people almost dehumanizing the other side and saying, yeah, we deserve to mo win more than anything else, and when you do win, it should be the greatest thing in the world, and when you do lose, it's the worst thing. You're defeated, you're weak, you're terrible, but it's an opportunity to improve and get beyond that. Competition is one of the things that makes us great, and indeed, when it comes to democratic ideals, even though it really sucks when people rile themselves up and are really convinced that if their mob doesn't make it into the game, or their candidate doesn't make it to high office, that their people will be obliterated, or their a game won't be worth playing. Uh, this is something that is really easy to convince yourself to raise the stakes, but it's something you need to be important to actually be realistic with. If Mojang doesn't add the penguin to this update, if the idea of making boats go so much faster is a good one, they can add it to the game regardless. We do sort of see this happen with the old choices, and sure, we have the chest with the boat and the frog, and that's the only direct example, but think about the Great Hunger, a mob that Mojang have explicitly said they will never add to the game. It was at the time where they were saying they will never add the old ideas, but yet the Great Hunger, which would have taken enchantments off an item, was later added, sort of, in the form of the grindstone. Any really good idea can eventually rise to the top anyway, and so even though it seems like the most competitive thing and the most important thing that the right people win, ultimately the best ideas can still float to the top regardless, and in the same way, you might be very bummed out that in a democratic system, it feels as though your people never win and they're never represented, but ultimately you're always making a change. The whole point of the system is to have your voice heard and it's better to have a voice heard and then maybe ignored than to not have a voice heard at all. Or uh, we could perhaps say within a democracy it's important to improve as best you can and so... I considered following the real-life parallel of democracy and applying it to Minecraft, but it doesn't really seem to work because the best improvements that people suggest to regular elections in the Western world are that you could have mandatory voting or a ranked choice system or a none of the above option, but none of these really work in Minecraft. I mean, ranked choice might be a good idea, but a none of the above option is the same as not voting in genuinely every single way, besides maybe making a big protest against Mojang, something they explicitly do not want. Mandatory 
voting would not work because lots of people log into Minecraft with a non-internet connected PC and if they don't want to vote why would we force them anyway and even again with the ranked choice system it seems as though almost never will this have actually made a difference. There is no major evidence to suggest that penguin voters would have switched to crab significantly more than armadillo enough to switch the votes over and so ultimately it doesn't really seem as though most real world options work here. However Mojang can instead look at it as a video game election and do some basic things as a game studio to improve people's perception. One of these is give more details. This is something I was a very big proponent of uh, last year and I'm glad that they've done a better job with 2023. However it is very minor details you can find outside the website for things like the penguin being able to improve a boat speed while in the boat. This would have made a huge difference if they'd mentioned it anywhere in the video. If you are telling people you really want to hear their voices it's important that you ask the question correctly. Like I cannot ask right now like oh yeah you guys okay with the genocide. Oh, yeah, I can't say that and then expect a real honest answer and in the same way if you're having an election it's important to give more details. Give as many as you feel comfortable giving up front. Anything that you know about the mob we as the end users should know as well. Instead of these really dumb one minute explanations where they make more jokes than uh, anything else maybe we should have a Jeb style blackboard where he explains the vague concept of each mob and why Mojang thinks it would be a good idea and what they think the drawbacks would be maybe even. You could go really crazy on this with extra details but more details is better than less. If you really believe in the concept of just revealing two or three details about a mob then make sure you reveal an equal amount about each of them. You cannot give a full explanation about the crab claw being a reaching item or about the wolf farmer being what the scute is used for and then not explain the primary purpose of the penguin. This is a big mess up. Also I think it's important to say better transparency is important too. Explaining how it is that the mob votes go from the game to the server and how they have fraud detection would help a lot of people with their trust in the system. Uh, this is very important uh, especially when it comes to Mojang talking about all the time uh, their responsibility factor and how they have to encourage people to go out into the real world and do important things. Minecraft will not add sharks because they're worried about people going out and killing sharks. Mojang will not add lots of things to the game because they're worried about their implication on the real world but yet they'll have a democracy in their system that basically encourages people not to vote or to vote for the one that everyone's telling them to because of reasons that can't really be verified. Be open and transparent and give people a good example of a democratic system so when they interact with ones later in their life they do it with a good vibe and a good mind and as a good voter. In the real world you should be maybe reading into the policies of parties rather than just hearing a news clip or looking on Twitter and that is the exact thing they're encouraging people to do with their Minecraft elections. But the final thing you could do and this is obviously subjective I think better choices are a good thing. Ultimately if we look back at previous years and we say yeah these mobs are not the very greatest ones they could have added that seems as though it's a bad thing. The very best choice you know every year Mojang should have a bunch of concepts which they're not going to be adding to their update rather than throwing them away work out the best of those internally maybe with a poll and then put it out to the public rather than kind of it feels like they just make free mobs up out of thin air three days before the vote and they say yeah I guess like a penguin or like a crab uh, 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 a moo bloom from the other game that we made. Um, I, I feel as though it's important to actually have some good fleshed out decent ideas ones which really have been developed in some way before they reach the public so that we really are voting on real choices. That is how we could improve the mob vote but even if we do uh, in its current form are we better off without it? Despite this being the worst mob vote that we've ever had, this is still in its current state a good addition to the game. Three groups of people need to be made happy in any corporation, the shareholders, employees and customers and this game has a huge marketing event for Minecraft which I think the shareholders must love. It's a fun event for employees and ultimately leads to more engagement with the customers. This is perhaps the second biggest event on the Minecraft calendar and removing the vote would remove all of those things but even deeper and worse. I think that removing the vote is not a viable alternative and despite half a million people thinking it's such a good option that they want to sign a petition I don't think that they are in the right but instead I think it's worth reforming the vote in some way and looking at previous successes and failures and working out what to do from there. Rather than just looking at the vote count as the overall metric or the you know the number of viewers as the best way to determine this it's important to work out how do you make Minecraft a better game and more importantly how do you do so responsibly because these are the 
the important questions that I think you'll be judged on as a game studio. Minecraft might have done some very impressive things as a studio, some very challenging things in the form of bringing one version of Minecraft into two when it comes to how they plan updates. However, there are many bigger challenges and concerns, and the biggest among these is how do you find the match between expectation and reality, and how Mojang does that is something that is going to define how we see them as a studio over the coming years and decades. But that is something we're going to have to wait until next year to see. For now, I've been IBX Cat. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, you might like a few of the other uh, longer form opinion pieces on this channel, because for now, I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.